my friends. Today I'm playing with a new gadget. The Goal Zero Yeti 500X. I'm hoping this uh, comes in handy. I'm going to go camping. And also in the event of a power outage here at the house. I'm about to do a test and run this 12 volt refrigerator off of a fully charged 500X. I'm going to pull the AC power supply out of that and the 500X comes with some really cool features to, to see how much power you're using, how much power you're putting out, how much power is coming in, how much power is left. When it's not plugged in and fully charged, you actually get more readings and uh, I'll show you that once I get this thing going. So I am definitely looking to power anything anywhere, whether it's here at the house or out on the road, out in the bush. So what I've done here is plug in the DC cable into the Goal Zero 500X and I've turned on the 12 volt ports here. That's why that white light is now illuminated above the 12 volt ports. It's still plugged into AC power in the back, which I'm about to disconnect. If it was charging, this would be blinking blue light. And the 12 volt is going into the winter fridge freezer. It's running on AC right now over here on the fridge freezer. And I have both cables plugged in. The way the refrigerator works, once the AC power goes out, it then starts pulling power from the DC cable and from the Yeti. So I'm about to start a test here and go completely over to DC power starting at 10.05 a.m. And I also want to point out if you saw my other video on the fridge freezer, now a day and a half into it, I've seen uh, 38 degrees consistently in the fridge part and it's now below zero at negative four in the freezer and there's been times when the fridge freezer has actually turned off in a good way and the compressor has shut down and that little green light turns off when it maintains but you can see it's actually at zero degrees right now so let's get this thing running on DC power and see how long the Goal Zero Yeti 500X can power a 12 volt 62 quart refrigerator. Okay, so we've now have disconnected the AC power that was charging up the Yeti 500X. And you can see the cord pulled out in the back back there. And um, have also pulled out the AC power for the fridge. And with that, we now get a battery indicator showing a voltage of 13.1 coming from the Yeti. Temperatures are pretty stable. I even though it drops to zero degrees, uh, it, it must regulate itself, the refrigerator, and it goes up a few degrees and it comes back down a few degrees. So that's pretty normal. I'm gonna monitor this during the test and we'll also be monitoring how much power is consumed. Right now the refrigerator is pulling approximately 47, 52, 51 watts. And I also reset the watts per hour meter here too. And we'll be watching this as I drain the Yeti 500X all the way down to see how long you could keep this refrigerator, which was pre-chilled down to fridge freezer temperatures and has frozen bottles of water inside about 12 one liter bottles of water more to come here on this test playing with the gadget i figured i'd point out something pretty early on in this test i just started it up about 10 minutes ago and originally the yeti was showing that it only had eight hours remaining to empty and now it is showing almost a hundred hours remaining to empty and the difference is 
the refrigerator turning on the compressors. If you notice the green light is off, my freezer is at the set point of, of zero. The fridge is below the set point at 34. Volts are 13.3. But once that green light clicked on, and it was on for a little while, I was showing that it only had eight hours available. I am hoping and expecting to get one day out of this battery for this refrigerator. And so this is going to be a back and forth. I'm sure the green light turning on and it's sucking a ton of power out of the Yeti and then the green light turning off. So let's see how long this can last. Okay, I promise I won't bore you with too much of this stuff, but wanted to show you what happens when the refrigerator freezer clicks on the compressor. It's now showing eight and a half hours until empty because it just clicked on. And with the fridge, the, the freezer actually went up a few degrees. The fridge incredibly went down a lot and uh, the green light is on. So, uh, like I said, this is going to be a back and forth. And I'll keep an eye on it. See how this goes. This is interesting. The compressor just turned off, so the green run light just shut off as well. But I want to point out, this fridge has dropped it below the set point on the freezer. Set point is zero. It's now negative two. And the set point on the fridge is 37. It's now registering 30 degrees, and uh, then it has shut down, and we're back to saying there's 99.9 .9 hours available on the Yeti. And just to show you the temperatures on the inside over here, I have the two thermometers inside, negative four on the freezer side. Don't have that thermometer going, and then on the refrigerator side is 32 degrees. So that was interesting how low the fridge went. More to come. All right, the final countdown of this test. Running the Yeti 500X to power the 62 quart 12 volt fridge freezer. And it has been now going for 12 hours. It's about 10.05 p.m. We started around 10.05 a.m. and the Yeti has consumed 311 watt hours and has 1.1 hours left. I would have expected a little bit more watt hours output and I thought we were going to go a little bit longer than 12 hours here on the refrigerator. One of the things I noticed running on the DC power is, is the temperature actually was lower than running on AC power probably because AC has to take into account for the inverter. I am next going to run a test for Econ, and Econ will allow a lot more variability in the temperature set point, which will keep that green light off longer, I'm assuming, and allow much more battery life out of the Yeti 500X. Uh, one of the things that's neat about the Yeti 500X. You'll see here it has 10.2 volts, but the refrigerator is seeing 12.9 volts. That is because the Yeti has a regulated 12 volt cigarette lighter output. And uh, that was really important. A um, lot of videos out there and reviews. This is the input for AC and for the solar panels. USBs, power delivery input, where you can add another 60 watts of input for a total of 180 watts, 120 here, 60 here, to recharge fast, and then the AC, which has an inverter, um, and if you turn on the AC inverter, it will start taking about 7 watts. Uh, we'll also mention that the solar input has an MPBT controller. I haven't tested that. That will uh, be a future test as well. Okay, and we're getting ready to close out this test. And I'm not sure how much longer we're going to get out of the Yeti. We are now 13 and a half hours into running the 12 volt refrigerator. 
and temperature is maintained really well during that. The 12.9 volts is very nice. Knowing that, this is showing 9.1 volts over here on the Yeti. And uh, I'm not going to be able to catch the precise moment that the Yeti ends up giving a fault when it can't supply enough energy to the 12 volt output. Um, but wanted to look, it just went down to zero hours. And what do you know? We do know the moment. And there you go. That will also give you a feel for how loud the fan is on the Winter 62 Quart DZ. So, folks, uh, going to wrap it up here on this text. The next test will be to run the refrigerator on Econ Power right there. And that's what I was really thinking uh, is going to last hopefully a day. I'm hoping to get a day out of this. So if I can't do solar panels over there, or if I didn't have the generator over there, gas generator, I can make it a day. So we'll see how that test goes. Meanwhile, thanks for watching, everybody. And... Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Take care.